In this video, we're going to introduce the angular momentum operator. So similar to how linear momentum has its own momentum operator in quantum mechanics, so does angular momentum. And like we spoke about in the first video, these are two very different concepts with the angular momentum being the momentum for uh, something going in circular motion rather than the straight line translational motion um, associated with the linear momentum, right? So again, we have this same uh, general physical problem, some mass, traveling in a circle along a ring. Uh, the only two things I want to kind of illuminate in this video is you can think of its position as a vector, right? So you have a position vector that denotes its current position along the ring and a velocity vector that denotes its uh, velocity uh, is linear velocity, right? Um, also, its linear momentum can be thought of as a vector as well, right? So you'll have the linear momentum vector which um, is gonna be related to the velocity vector weighted by the mass, right? So, um, so we can define the angular momentum in the following way. So we can define angular momentum And in quantum mechanics, we usually use uh, the notation L for the angular momentum. So we can have a vector for angular momentum that we define as the cross product between the position vector and the momentum vector, right? So just like it's, um, you know, just like the angular momentum would be position times uh, momentum, we're going to think of it as the cross product here between the position and momentum vectors, right? Now the position vector is just gonna be X, Y, Z, if we're dealing with the Cartesian coordinate plane, and you're gonna have a cross product of that with the momentum in the X direction, the momentum in the Y direction, and the momentum in the Z direction, right? So if we take that cross product, then we end up with the following components of this vector. We'll have Y rho Z minus Z rho Y, right? This will be the X component of this cross product. Then you'll have Z rho X minus X rho Z. That's the Y component. And then you have X rho Y minus Y rho X. And so that's going to be um, the Z component. So notice that for each component, right? So in the X, if we think about the X component here, right? Um, it's dealing with the position and momentum in all of the other planes, right? Because if you keep in mind that um, that angular momentum vector is going to bisect basically the circular motion, right? So like I've showed before, right? If this is our circle, then the angular momentum vector is going to shoot straight up. So if the particle is traveling in the Y and Z direction, angular momentum is going to be in the um, in the x direction, same thing with each of the other uh, two dimensional components, right? So each of these is going to be a different component to the angular momentum. So we'll have a angular momentum in the x direction, a angular momentum in the y direction, and an angular momentum in the z direction, right? Okay, so let's take one of these examples. Let's take z, right? So the angular momentum in the z direction. angular momentum in Z. So uh, L sub Z is going to be, which is given here, right? X rho Y minus Y, y rho X, right? So we have our definition for the orbital angular momentum in the Z direction. Now, we all, if we want to build a quantum operator here, we already have quantum operators for linear momentum, right? So the linear momentum operators, right? We have rho x, which would just be h bar over i d dx. And then the linear momentum in the y direction would just be h bar over i derivative with respect to y, right? So we can use this term, this uh, expression, right? Along with these definitions for the linear momentum in order to define an operator, a quantum operator for angular momentum. So the operator 
for angular momentum. We'll put a hat over it. So it's an operator L hat is going to be X times the linear momentum operator in the Y direction. So we got H bar over I D D Y uh, minus Y H bar over I D D X. Right? So, uh, given this form, we can actually simplify this in the following way. So we'll have H bar over I X D D Y minus Y D D X. Right? So that gives us a form of our linear momentum operator. So this is the linear momentum operator for the Z direction or the, the angular momentum operator in the Z direction in Cartesian coordinates. And then if it's in spherical polar coordinates, you would just uh, convert these uh, derivatives like we've done before. So that would just be H bar over I D D phi, right? So this will be the angular momentum operator in the Z direction in uh, polar coordinates. And then up here, this is in Cartesians, right? So, uh, so we have our uh, angular momentum operator. This is the definition of the angular momentum operator. Um, let's look and see, is it an eigenvector or is, is the um, particle in the ring wave function an eigenvector of this operator, right? So is a particle in the ring wave function an eigenfunction? of this operator, right? So basically we wanna apply the operator to the wave function, see if we get some constant times the wave function back again, right? So let me switch colors here. So what we're gonna do here is apply the orbital angular momentum operator to the particle in the ring wave function and see what we get, right? So we would have H bar over I, the derivative of the wave function with respect to phi, right? And we looked at the way, the form of the wave function in the previous video. So we have I M sub L H bar over I E to the I M sub L phi, right? We get some stuff that cancels here. So the I cancels here. And so we're left with M sub L or I should say H bar M sub L E to the I M sub L B right now, this is just going to be our wave function back again, the form of it. And so that gives us, um, that this would be an eigenfunction, right? So this would just be H bar M sub L psi M sub L. Right, so that checks out. So that means that this would be an eigenfunction of the uh, the angular momentum operator. So, um, so given this, right, just like with linear momentum, right, we get this um, this this term out front, right, that we can actually interpret very similar to linear momentum. Remember, for linear momentum, the eigenvalue we were able to interpret as either the particle going to the left or going to the right. Right, so um, so a positive M sub L in this case can be interpreted as clockwise rotation, while a negative M sub L can be interpreted as counterclockwise rotation. Right, so either way, just like with linear momentum, the particle's still traveling in the same, or with the same momentum, but it's changing directions. Same thing here, is we're ending up with two, uh, the particle going in two directions, clockwise or counterclockwise, right? Okay, so that's the angular momentum operator. So next up, we're going to start looking at three dimensions. So the problems that we've looked at so far, these were all the two dimensional particle on the ring. Um, now we're going to look at the three-dimensional particle on a sphere.